Hey everyone, welcome back. Guess what? We're doing a brewery review episode. Oh, After a long, long wait, we are back in the brewery scene and we're excited because today we are at Gamecraft Brewing. This has been a brewery we've wanted to go to for a very long time. So strap in and join us. Welcome back to another episode, beer lovers. I'm Jeff. Mickey, I'm Mia. And today, Wait. sure. Sorry, Jeff. <laughs> Should we just keep that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, today we are in Laguna Hills, California, at Gamecraft Brewing. This brewery has only been open uh, a year, maybe two years. Uh, they were huge straight from the get-go blowing up with all kinds of GABF metals. Uh, I've tried plenty of their beers. Mia, you've tried plenty of their beers. We love this place, just haven't actually been to the brewery. So we thought, what better time to go than right now? They're working on a massive expansion here. Uh, it's really exciting. So uh, come along with us and we'll take you for the ride. Oh yeah, and let's have some beer. Gamecraft Brewing. Uh, Gamecraft got started as an idea for a local uh, pub or gathering place for the community here in Laguna Hills. Um, I was contacted by the co-founder Scott Sabula uh, while I was over in Germany studying for beer and we came agreed on the concept of video games as part since uh, we're both nerds and active players in that regard. So combining both of our passions, beer and video games, is kind of the natural development of it. So the, the styles that we've specialized at Gamecraft are mostly West Coast style ales, uh, IPAs, uh, hoppy beers, low body, uh, lots of malt, or excuse me, not lots of hop flavor, not malt forward. Uh, do a couple stouts, um, some of which we've won uh, medals for. Um, our There Is No Cow Level coffee stout got a gold at GABF in 2019 and uh, gold at see, so was CCBC, California Craft Brewers Cup, in uh, 2019 as well. Uh, our West Coast IPAs do pretty well. We've gotten a gold at California Craft Brewers Cup for pay to win. It's a Citro Mosaic IPA, so just very bright, uh, citrusy, a little bit of mixed berry in there. Uh, the other thing we specialize at, at Gamecraft is our lagers, mostly German style. Uh, lots of lighter beers. We have a Czech Pils on currently, Prager, which is not what I'm drinking now. Uh, we have a Hellas, American Light Lager. We just released a Dunkel. Uh, we have, we won a bronze medal at the 2020 GABF for Umbirion, which is our Schwartz beer, which is that dark lager. Uh, and I think our pride and joy is the lagering tanks behind me in the background. Uh, we have six of them, uh, not a very common sight to see, uh, especially in Southern California. But uh, cool, uh, fun equipment to work the, the magic of the lager yeast on. Uh, yeah. The beer I like to drink the most now is Gamecraft Light, which is just our light American lager. Uh, 
it's just really refreshing, uh, crisp. There's not a whole lot of like complicated like hop notes going on or malt. Um, it's just low ABV, you know, really sessionable. You can have a couple and not feel heavy or bogged down on it. Um, that's pretty much what all of our brew staff drinks as well. I say if you're when you're looking to come to GameCraft, look for our loggers. Um, I think that's our, definitely our one of our main points of pride here. Um, our logger program. Um, also enjoying the fusion style pub food that we have. A uh, little bit of Latin and Asian style uh, influenced pub food, um, and then as well as obviously the games. Uh, even though we're video game focused, we do mostly like board games and tabletop games here. Um, and yeah, it's a good time. Uh, as far as events planned, we have uh, weekly, we have Mondays uh, D&D sessions um, hosted by one of our staff members. Uh, Wednesdays we do trivia. Uh, currently right now we're doing a summer uh, fair festival, so uh, we have discounts on uh, tankards or uh, moss, a one liter size uh, classes for our loggers and then uh, eventually in December, uh, early December, we'll have our third year anniversary. And if you made it to OCU Beer Week, thanks for coming. This is my first beer today. It's taken nine hours for me to get this beer and we only got here an hour ago. So <laughs> enough talking. This is Gamecraft Light. It's their American Light Lager coming in at 4.4. Smells like summertime. Let's hope it tastes like summertime. Oh yeah, very, very light. Very easy to drink. Even though it's like low ABV, it still has some flavor to it, so it's not like super watered down. Um, yeah, this being really cold at a pool, or just hanging out outside with your friends barbecuing, this is one to get. All right guys, well, I guess it's my turn to drink after all that running around. Uh, I'm starting off with something very refreshing. It's a rice lager. This is called Otaku. It is 5.3%. And uh, if you guys know me, I'm a big fan of rice lagers. I actually made one myself. And uh, Hanamachi from Bottle Logic is like one of my all time favorites. So, um, I'm not going to lie and say I've never had this before, but I'm going to go ahead and drink it and then talk about it with you guys. So, cheers. Mm. It's beautiful. It's just light, super dry. It's got like like a silky kind of mouthfeel to it and uh, like a floral bitterness. Um, it's definitely got more presence than Hanamachi, I will say that much. Uh, it's a little bit more bold than Hanamachi is, which honestly, to me, especially, it is kind of hot today, even though we're indoors. It feels like summer. I'm sweating like crazy. Um, so yeah, this is this is definitely hitting the spot. And uh, just that floral mouth, like the floral flavor in my mouth right now is just hitting just right. This is This is beautiful. Right, my next beer is called 360 No Scope. I don't know what that means. I don't play games, but it's probably something to do with a game. And this is a beer, and I know about that. It's a juicy West Coast. It's coming in at 6.7, I believe. So let's get it going. Hmm, yeah, it's a light juiciness on the nose. Let's see how it tastes. It's like the pith of of a citrus fruit and then a little bitter at the end from the hops. It's pretty decent. But still pretty light. It's not like like a hazy juicy, but it's like a little bit of a juicy plus the West Coast uh, style. Not too bad. All right, guys, we're keeping up with the clear train. Uh, this is one of their IPAs. This is called Pay to Win. Uh, it's 7.1%. It's West Coast style, so you guys know it's right up my alley. 
Um, I will let you guys know, Gamecraft typically has uh, a couple hazy beers on tap, so I don't want you to be discouraged and think that it's only clear beer, uh, but I think they're brewing to suit the weather. Uh, it's getting into summertime, so all these light clear beers, sorry haze boys, I'm all about it, pay to win, here we go, cheers. It's not often that I want to compliment the malt profile on an IPA. Typically, I'm always digging straight for the hops, but I tell you what, the malt, malt profile on this is absolutely fantastic. It coats your palate, it's soft, it's slightly sweet, and then the hops just kind of come in, kind of barge in the door, and they're like, hey, we're here, we are an IPA, um, but it's not overwhelming. This is a very mellow drinking West Coast. Uh, honestly, at 7.1%, it's teetering towards dangerous. Uh, I could imagine myself with a four pack of cans of this at the beach and it would be gone pretty fast. Um, so it's not for the faint of heart. Um, but I'll tell you what guys, it's got tiny beautiful bubbles and the bitterness is just, what are the IBUs? This has got 90 IBUs. It's bitter, guys, but 90, it does not taste like 90, and I'm gonna attribute that to this excellent malt profile. I think it really balances out the hops really, really well. This is definitely a winner of an IPA. All right, this one in front of me is called Prager. It's a bohemian-style pilsner coming in at four and a half. It's like a sweet breadiness on the nose. It smells pretty delicious, actually. And it's the same in the in the body. It's a little bit sweet, kind of bready, still very light, which I appreciate. This like, since it's getting hot, like this is where I want to be. I want to be in in the light loggers, the pilsner zone, and I want it to be cold, and I want to be in pool, and I would bring this along with me. All right, guys. So the next beer up is called Face McShooty. Uh, <laughs> it's a West Coast IPA, 7.8%. Uh, reminds me of Bodie McBoatface when that was a thing online. Um, regardless, it's another beautifully clear beer. Man, they really filter these suckers really good at, at uh, Gamecraft, man. Um, yeah, I'm ready for another IPA. Let's do it. You know... It's kind of tripping me out because this beer is also 90 IBUs. And I don't know if it's just because I had some of their food, had a bite of their food a minute ago. But uh, man, it's, uh, it's a lot more mellow than the last one. Um, it's definitely bitter in there, but it's not like, it's not coating my palate and leaving anything behind. Uh, just another solid, really refreshing West Coast. Mm. God, I wish I could make beer like this at home. <laughs> um, yeah, all I gotta say is so far, everything's been super sessionable, super drinkable. I'm amazed at 90 IBUs. This is really impressive. Damn good beer. Okay, my final beer is a little darker than my other ones. Thought I'd take a left turn. This one is called Perfect Dark Especial, and it is a Mexican style dunkle lager. That's a mouthful. Wowie, it's coming in at 4.8. The color is really pretty. It's a, uh, it has kind of a reddish brown hue. It smells kind of roasty toasty on the nosy. And it indeed tastes like that, like a really light light roasted flavor going through it. Um, hmm. I don't think I've ever had this kind of combination of all the words that I said before, but this is a nice change from what I had. Yeah, pretty much I'm just getting that, that roasty, like malty kind of flavor, kind of sweet. It's good. 
It's different from the other ones I had. I don't think I really had a bad one here today. Let's see what Jeff has to say about his. Get on over here, Jeff. Well guys, I'm down to my final beer. Uh, had to save this one for last because it is a Roush beer. That's right guys, a Roush beer. This is called Whole Hog. It is 5.7% and uh, the tasting notes say smoky, beechwood, and umami. Uh, umami in a beer? Yes please and thank you. Uh, color's fantastic. It's still really clear. It's got more of an amber hue of it in it. Um, I feel like the last couple Roush beers I had were a little bit on the darker side, so this is a little less intimidating. Although the name, Whole Hog, makes me kind of wonder if maybe I'm in for something more than I bargained for, so let's check it out. Cheers. Oh yeah, that's barbecue beer. That's definitely 100% barbecue beer. Um, What's nice is, to be honest with you, I'm normally not a fan of Roush beers. <laughs> I just, they're not like an everyday drinking beer to me. And a lot of times that smokiness is just a little too much. It's a little overbearing. This is not overbearing. Um, it's still really light, but it's got this beautiful light smokiness that just kind of like carries you through the entire flavor from start to finish. Man, I would love some tri-tip and this, maybe some corn too. I love corn on my tri-tip. Yeah, Mia was bringing up that this reminds her of those cocktails where they have the little glass and they light a smoked wood chip under it and it gets all smoky and you lift it off. That's kind of the vibe that this comes from. Uh, damn, it's good. It is, it, it's surprisingly good. Again though, this would not be my everyday drinking beer, but I tell you what, if somebody was pouring this next to a barbecue stand, this is the beer I'm going for, 100%. Well guys, we finished tasting the beer, so it's time to tell you which ones our favorites were. So let's just start off by noting uh, the proper glassware we have here. Um, I, I swear to you that we only wanted a pint, but we're with Mary Jane, and any of you Orange County locals that know Mary Jane, she always goes big. <laughs> She, she doesn't mess around, she wants that proper glassware. So here, here we are, uh, just big, beautiful, <laughs> delicious, gigantic beers for us to drink and then, you know, dry, drive on to the next, <laughs> the next destination. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm driving. And I'll... I'm gonna be probably drinking both of these, unfortunately. I just push everything off to Jeff. Anyways, let's go ahead and get into the beer. So. As you guys saw, most of these beers were relatively low ABV. Nothing was Imperial or anything like that. Um, actually, there was one Imperial, right? Yeah, that, that was a stout. But it was like, what? It was 8.8. 8.8%. So no, nothing over 10%. So nothing to, you know, completely murder you. Um, and I know that they were all clear. I'm telling you guys, if you come to GameCraft, they typically do have hazies on board. But when it comes to clear beer, there is no better brewery than GameCraft to do this. Uh, their clear beer just kills the game, from hazies to lagers to everything else. Um, and speaking of which, right here, my favorite beer of the day was Prager. That's right, guys. Prager was my favorite. Uh, if you guys know Prague and you know Frogger, that's Prager. Uh, I just, it's like crispy, delicious, it's got a nice little like hop profile to it, but more than anything, it's super drinkable. In fact, looking at this glass now with these tiny bubbles. I knew that was good. Uh, yeah, the tiny bubbles. Tiny bubbles in my glass. Uh, probably gonna drink this whole darn thing. So, uh, Mia, why don't you tell them what your favorite was? Mine was actually the whole hog, which is not light, clear, or crispy. It is pretty much all, all opposite of that. Um, mm -hmm. But I really did, and, and also it wasn't even one that I picked to review. This was one of Jeff's, which is not, not you, something that happens. Usually <laughs> Mia takes the lead and usually <laughs> picks the better beer. Apparently I, I picked the better beer this time. If we all remember Portland, Jeff was choosing literally something from my flights constantly at every brewery. I felt really cool and, and awesome that trip. But yes, I, I picked one of his and this one actually 
Um, I know he he spoke about it tasting like one of those smoky cocktails, but specifically, speaking of Oregon, it reminds me of one of the speakeasies that I went to there, and they brought me some like wood fire smoke, whatever fancy thing, and they did that whole thing. So when I drink this, I think of that, and it's like I get the best of both worlds because it's a beer, but it's also like a memory that I really love. So. That makes me so happy because I always talk about how certain beers bring me back to memories, and it's typically Mostly the, cereal. Mo or, or, or the fruit trees in my parents' backyard. I get that a lot, too. Oh, Karen. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I, I love it. I love that that ties you back to a pleasant memory, and, and that's kind of what makes you enjoy it so much. And it's a damn good beer, I'm telling it's you It's really guys. good. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't think, really a style that I've ever had before. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's, it's have a beer, but also have a workout. This thing's a big, this is big for me. It's like the size of her head. It's the size of my head. This is like the free weights that I use. Just like <laughs> one pound weights. <laughs> well, guys, we're going to finish. Well, we're going to, we're going to try. I'm going to try to finish these beers. And, uh, it's yeah. Gonna, it's going to be then, a frat party. Then, just for then we're probably going to head out and, you know, go do some more fun stuff. So, yeah. See you outside. Yeah, we'll see you outside. All right, that's gonna do it for us here at Gamecraft in Laguna Hills. Guys, we had a lot of fun. The beers were fantastic. Not surprised at all. Uh, it's kind of fun actually coming here because never been to the brewery, but tried a bunch of their beers and we got to try a ton of new ones, which yeah. tells me that they really do cycle out like new styles, new beers, new flavors uh, quite often. Uh, Got to give a huge shout out to uh, Mary Jane. Man, she took really good care of us. If uh, if you're Orange County local, you know Mary Jane. She's Mary, great. Mary Jane did Mary Jane things. She's she, brilliant. She, she was awesome. Uh, by the way, guys, we didn't get a chance to really talk about the food that much, uh, but Mary Jane did bring us some of their, you know, small bites. We had some fried wontons and those little garlic, or like pretzel these little bites. garlic pretzel bites. Really really good yeah. they have a full-blown kitchen here so if you're looking for a place where you can not only drink beer but enjoy some good food I think this is a solid stop for you which by the way if you can hear it you, you might be able to hear it in the background we're literally right next to the 5 freeway it's right off the freeway so a real easy stop for you if you're in Orange County you should definitely stop by if you enjoyed this episode make sure to give it a thumbs up hit the bell Subscribe to the channel, do all of the YouTube things. All the so, YouTube things. So that you know that the YouTube episode has been uploaded. Uh, <laughs> but that's that's gonna do it uh, for us. And until next time, I am Mia. I'm Jeff. And we'll uh, catch you on another episode of Let's, Let's Have, have some, some Beer. beer. Cheers. Cheers. Today we are reviewing a Burley Oak beer. You know what dream is, right? Well, guess what? This is a collab with our friend at Beer Zombies, Chris. And uh, it's rule number four. Seatbelts. <laughs>